What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to open three envelopes and share with you the profiles and careers of the individuals that signed for me. So let's jump right into this. First return is postmarked from Santa Ana, California, and it is a return from former California Angels great Roger Repose on one, two, and I actually sent him a third card, and I don't know if it was a duplicate of one of these two, which I think it was, but he actually swapped it out with a signed photograph of himself as a New York Yankee. So let me tell you about Roger Repose and his career in baseball. Repose, a Washington native, played his high school baseball in Washington and also spent some time in college at Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington. He was signed as a free agent by the New York Yankees right before the 1960 season. After the Yankees signed Roger, the 19-year-old was assigned to the Yankees Class D affiliate and would split time between the Class D affiliate and the Class C affiliate for the Yankees that season, appearing in 55 games. He would then be promoted to the Class C affiliate in 1961, where he would appear in 133 games for the Yankees that year, batting 287 in their Class C affiliate. In 1962, he would be moved up to the Class A affiliate, where he would appear in 132 games. In 1963, he would be promoted to Double A for the Yankees, where he would appear in 138 games and hit 20 home runs. The first time in his career, he would show some power production. The following year, in 1964, he would follow that up the Double A season, hitting 23 home runs for the Yankees in 125 games, which would get a promotion to the major leagues on September 11, 1964. Repose would appear in 11 games for the Yankees and fail to get a hit in those 11 games up with the Yankees, primarily being used as a defensive replacement and only getting one at-bat that year. Well, the following year, 1965, the Yankees would assign him to AAA, where he would appear in 75 games for the Yankees, where he responded batting 287 and hitting 14 home runs that year. Well, the Yankees would reward him by calling him up in 1965 for the remainder of the season where he would respond in 79 games, hitting 12 home runs for the Yankees that year in 65. Well, he would come back to the Yankees, uh, prepared to start the season with the Yankees in 1966. He would appear in just 37 games for the Yankees before they would trade him to the Kansas City Athletics in 1966, where he would appear in 101 games to finish out the year with the Athletics. Well, in 1967, he would again split time between two teams, starting the year with the Kansas City Athletics, eventually being traded to the California Angels midway through the season. He would finish out the year in 1967 with the Angels and then would enter the 1968 season pretty much as a full-time outfielder first baseman appearing in 133 games for the Angels of 1968. The following year he would only appear in 103 games due to an injury with the Angels and in 1970 he would be back to a full-time status player pretty much appearing in 137 games for the California Angels. In 1971, he would appear in 113 games for the Angels, but his batting average would dip below the 200 mark that year, so he would have some limited playing time. In 1972, the Angels decided to send him back down to AAA to start out the year, after only appearing in three games for the Angels that year. Well, after a couple months in the minors, in June of 1972, the Angels decided to trade him to the Baltimore Orioles for infielder Jerry Devanin. The Baltimore Orioles couldn't find a place on their roster for him, and he remained in AAA for the remainder of the 1972 season, never appearing in a game for the Baltimore Orioles. After the conclusion of the 72 season, the Orioles did not resign Repose, and he, in 1973, would sign a contract to play overseas in the Nippon Professional Baseball League in Japan. In 19, 
73, he would play for the Te Heo Club Lions. And then from 1974 to 1977, he would play for the Yukult Swallows of the Japanese Professional Baseball League. So despite not appearing in the major leagues after the age of 31, or 32, I should say, he did play another six years in professional baseball in Japan. Well, obviously, after um, his time in Japan, he was in his late 30s, and he retired from baseball altogether and moved back to California, where uh, I'm not really sure what he did post-baseball playing career, but very cool to add Roger to my collection. I'll make a trade any day for a signed photo for a card, so that's that's pretty cool of him to include this in the envelope. So we'll move on to the next person that signed for me. All right, so this next one is postmarked from Florida, and it is former Washington Senator slash Texas Ranger Casey Cox on one, two, and three. And try to get them all in the picture here. And I only had three cards of Cox this time, so uh, normally I send four, so that way if they want to keep one or two or whatever, no big deal. But uh, I only had three, so I sent those three, and he signed them for me. So let me tell you about Casey Cox and his career in baseball. Casey Cox, a California native, played his high school baseball at Woodrow Wilson High School in Long Beach, California. Then would later go on to college at Long Beach City College in Long Beach, California, as well as California State University, Los Angeles. He would be actually signed as a free agent by the Cincinnati Reds in 1962 and would appear in their Class B affiliate that season for their franchise. Well, after the 1962 season, the Cleveland Indians would claim Casey from the Cincinnati Reds and he he would start the year with the Cleveland Indians affiliate, but then would be selected by the Washington Senators on, off of waivers. The Senators would put him in their Class A affiliate, and he would spend the 1960, the remainder of the 63 season for their Class A affiliate. Then in 1964, he would appear in 69 games for their Class A affiliate as a reliever. The following year, 1965, he would split time between uh, different levels of the Senators' minor league system and appeared in 86 games as a reliever for the various levels that he played at, compiling a 9-2 record and a 2.34 ERA. Well, the following year, in 1966, Cox would get his chance to make his Major League debut, and he would respond by posting a 4-5 and five record with a 3.50 ERA in 66 games for the Washington Senators. Well, in 1967, despite having a very, very good year, he would be sent down to the minor leagues, but only for a little bit, as he would appear in 54 games that year for the Washington Senators, posting a 7-4 and four record with a 2.96 ERA. The following year in 1968, for whatever reason, after having an excellent year again, the Washington Senators would send him down to the minor leagues where he would appear in 60 games that year for the Senators and appearing in just four at the major league level for the Senators. Well, in 1969, the Senators would give him a shot and he would actually start 13 games that year for the Senators and post a 12-7 and record with a 27 Eight ERA. Well, the following year, the Senators decided to make him a full-time starter. He started 30 of 37 games that year, but posted just an 8 and 12 record with a 4.45 ERA. Well, in 1971, he was primarily moved back to the bullpen, uh, just starting 11 games, where he posted a 5 and 7 record with a 3.98 ERA. Well, Cox would make the move to the Tex Texas with the Texas Rangers when the Senators relocated across the country. In 1972, he would appear in 35 games that year for the Texas Rangers, but they decided to trade him on August 31st, 1972 to the New York Yankees for Jim Rowland. He would appear in just five games to finish out the 72 season with the Yankees. Well, going into 1973, 
he started the year with the Yankees, and he struggled a little bit uh, right off the bat uh, with the Yankees appearing in just one game. Well, in April of 1973, the Yankees decided to release him from his contract, and he was then looking for another position, and he signed on with the Chicago Cubs. However, the Chicago Cubs did not give him a shot to pitch at the majors, and he spent the entire 1973 season in AAA with the Cubs appearing in 27 games for their AAA affiliate. Well, after the 1973 season, Cox decided to hang it up from baseball and retire as a player. So in total, over Casey Cox's MLB career, he posted a 39-42 and win-loss record, had 20 saves, he pitched five complete games, and he posted a career 3.70 earned run average with 762 innings pitched. So overall, a very fair career for Mr. Cox. Um, you know, very, very happy to add his autograph to my collection because I've never gotten him before. So we'll move on to the final return. All right, so this final one is postmarked from Oregon, and it is former Washington Senator Dave Baldwin on one, also Milwaukee Brewer, and again as a senator on this card as well. On three of three, and again, I only had three, but they added a bonus with this individual is he actually added one, two, and three cards of his own to my to my autograph request. So, yes, this is a six of three return from Dave Baldwin, and these are custom cards, and on the back, it actually has a picture of him talking about his uh, baseball career, but not just his baseball career, but what he did post-playing career as well. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. But very cool return from Mr. Dave Baldwin to include these three custom cards along with the three originals that I sent him. So let me tell you about Dave Baldwin and his career in baseball and beyond. A Tucson, Arizona native, Baldwin pitched for three years at the University of Arizona including the 1959 College World Series, including pitching in the 1959 College World Series with the University of Arizona, winning one game, but unfortunately losing the final game to Oklahoma State. He would then sign with the Philadelphia Phillies after the 1959 College World Series as a free agent. Baldwin would spend quite a long time in the minor leagues with the Philadelphia Phillies. From 1959 to 1963, he would pitch in the Phillies minor league affiliates, primarily as a um, spot starter slash reliever. Well, in 1964, he would actually be let go by the Philadelphia Phillies, and he would spend time with the Houston Colt 45s, New York Mets, and finally landing a home with the Washington Senators. Between those three stops, he would appear in 32 games that year for those three affiliates. Well, in 1965, he would have a career year in the minor leagues. You know, it, it took him a while to get to this point, being he'd been playing since 1959. But for the Washington Senators, minor league affiliates, uh, splitting time between rookie ball, A ball, and triple A, he would post a 16-8 and record in 54 games for the Washington Senators. Well, in 1966, he would return to AAA for the Senators, and he would post a 9-10 and record, posting a 3.27 ERA in 36 games for the Senators. Well, after having such an excellent outing in 1966 for the Senators, he would be rewarded with a September call-up, and on September 6, 1966, he would make his Major League debut. He would appear in just four games the month of September, but the following year in 1967, he would have a spot in the bullpen with the Washington Senators, and he would post an immaculate 1.70 earned run average in 58 games for the Senators in 1967. Well, the following year in 1968, at the age of 30 years old, he would appear in 40 games that year for the Senators, but he would not match the magic numbers that he had in 1967 and would actually spend 10 games in the minor leagues that year as well. In 1969, he would spend the entire season in the majors with the Senators, 
posting a 2-4 record, appearing in 43 games for the Senators that year with an ERA of 4.05. Well, after the 69 season, the Washington Senators would then trade him to the Milwaukee Brewers for pitcher George Brunette. In 1970, he would split time between AAA and the Majors with the Brewers, but he would post a 2-1 record with a 2.55 ERA for the Brew Crew, appearing in 28 games that year. Despite posting that great record with the Brewers that year, the San Diego Padres, a new affiliate, decided to purchase his contract from the Brewers. Well, this may sound like a downer because he was sent to AAA for the San Diego Padres, but that AAA affiliate was Hawaii. So, at 33 years old, instead of being in the majors, Baldwin found himself playing the entire year in Hawaii, appearing in 45 games for the Padres AAA affiliate. Well, the following year in 1972, he would again not get a call up to the Padres and spend the entire year in 1972 in the, for the Padres in their AAA affiliate. Well, after the 72 season, after no call-ups to the majors, he would be let go by the Padres organization, but, you know, who can complain about spending two years in Hawaii playing baseball? And he would sign as a free agent with the Chicago White Sox. At 35 years old, he would spend the majority of his uh, season in AAA for the White Sox, appearing in 32 games for them. However, would get called up to the majors for three games and posted a 3.60 ERA in those three games for the White Sox. Well, going into 1974, Baldwin was then 36 years old. And he, again played for the White Sox AAA, but he returned to none other, the San Diego Padres, and at 36 years old, he was at the time the oldest pitcher in the PCL uh, to date at 36 years old. Well, after the 1974 season concluded, Baldwin would retire. Well, after the conclusion of his baseball playing career in 1974, he would go back to college and he would earn a, a PhD in genetics and also a master's degree in engineering from the University of Arizona. After receiving those degrees post-playing career, he worked as a genesist, an engineer, and even an artist until he retired in 2003. Subsequently, he has collaborated with other researchers studying the physics, physiology, and psychology of baseball. In addition, he has published a book called Snake Jazz, which is mentioned on the back of these cards. And I will put a link down in the description if you guys want to check that out to see if you want to purchase his memoirs. He also has uh, done some artwork, and if I can find some, I will share it with you, that has been um, made and posted in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. So, very, very happy to add Mr. Dave Baldwin to my collection. Um, he is a bright, shining example of why I do my channel on Remember the Great Sports, to try and help you know remember greats like this that aren't just greats on the baseball diamond, but you know after their baseball career went on to become very accomplished people. You know, in his case, an engineer and a geneticist, if I'm saying that right. Um, so very happy to have Mr. Bowman to the collection. Very grateful for him to send these three extras to me. Uh, very, very happy to add Casey Cox as well to the collection. And very happy as well to add Roger Repose to the collection. Not to mention the extra Yankees photo that he sent my way as an added bonus. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. i got to zoom out because i got a lot of stuff back in this return. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I always want to thank you, the viewer. As always, happy collecting, and I look forward to your comments below.